From the earliest days of flight, pilots could see the potential of aircraft as a vehicle for munitions. In 1910, Louis Poyon flew the aeroplane that carried Lieutenant Paul Beck of the United States Army, who carried out the world's first bombing tests. A few months later, Glenn Curtis demonstrated aerial bombing to a crowd of military personnel. The following year, Philip Parmalee thrilled crowds by dropping a bomb on a shed during a flying exhibition. But early aeroplanes were fragile constructions made from wood and fabric, not designed to carry armaments such as bombs. It wasn't until the Rumpler Taube rolled off the German production line that aeroplanes went into combat. On November the 1st, 1911, Italian Army Lieutenant Guilio Gavotti made history when he dropped four four-and-a-half-pound Cipelli grenades over Turkish positions, pulling the pins out with his teeth before tossing them over the side. The Germans used Taubas at the outset of World War I to drop three-kilo bomblets over Paris in 1914. But the aircraft was soon outmoded and went on to be used as a training aeroplane. A new breed of bombers took to the sky. The Voison III was the most notable, a sturdy steel machine developed by a French designer. Both the French and the Imperial Russian Air Forces used this pusher biplane. The Avro 504 was produced in Britain. Four of the biplanes made a successful raid on Germany's Zeppelin airbase at Lake Constance, delivering four 20-pound bombs each. While there were some skeptics who failed to recognize the potential of the aeroplane as a weapon of war, it didn't take long for flying machines to establish themselves as a vital part of military strategy in World War I. Balloons were also used by both sides for observation and home defense. As well as bombers and fighter airplanes, the Germans continued to produce Zeppelin airships. The giant steerable balloons had a greater bomb carrying capacity and could travel further than conventional aircraft. In 1915, the Kaiser approved Zeppelin attacks against Britain as long as historic monuments were not targeted. On January the 19th, the first people to die in bombing attacks were killed in Zeppelin air raids targeting English regional centers. A further 19 raids killed 181 people and forced the British to bolster their air defenses. In June 1915, R.A.J. Warnford earned the Victoria Cross for being the first person to bring down a German airship. He did so by dropping nine six-kilogram bombs on the Zeppelin. As the war drew on, newer aeroplanes proved more effective at downing airships, leading the German military to lose confidence in them. Gotha Wagonfabrik designed twin-engined bombers that carried a deadly payload over the channel, resulting in hundreds of civilian deaths. The British produced their own long-range bomber, the Handley Page Type O. When the Royal Naval Air Service commissioned the aircraft, it demanded, quote, a bloody paralyzer of an aeroplane, unquote. And that's exactly what it got. This monster of the air could carry a 2,000-pound bomb load, fly 95 miles per hour, and had a six-hour endurance. It measured 100 feet from wingtip to wingtip. The remarkable aircraft was powered by two 250-horsepower Rolls-Royce engines and included armored fuel tanks. The crew entered the cockpit through a trapdoor in the floor of the fuselage. The bombs were carried inside the Handley Page, suspended by their noses, and selected and released by an electrical current. Bombs could be dropped in fours or singly, their weight forcing them through a door built into the base of the bomb cell that closed behind them. The British sent the Handley Page to the Western Front and the Middle East, where it bombed submarine bases, warships, rail yards and factories. Of all the HP bombers flown in the First World War, only one was lost to enemy fire, and it took three enemy fighters with it. It was one loss too many for air command, however, and the bomber was confined to night bombings for the remainder of the war.
At war's end, the aeroplane had well and truly proved itself as a weapon of war. But not everyone was convinced. Billy Mitchell, the assistant chief of the US Army service, who was pushing for a greater slice of the defense pie, boasted that his aircraft could sink a battleship. Few military chiefs believed this was possible. In February 1921, Mitchell was allowed to use decommissioned American warships and captured German battleships to prove his point. Billy Mitchell, a prophet before his time, believed bomb-carrying planes could sink naval ships. In 1921, he arranged an amazing demonstration of air power. Army planes dumped their bombs on obsolete battleships. Mortally wounded, one of the ships slid out of sight. The first naval vessel sunk from the air. The others followed soon after. Billy Mitchell was right. Mitchell's aeroplane sank all six vessels and cemented the role of bombers in world warfare. The success of the bombing display woke the US Navy to the potential of aircraft. It established a naval aviation division that to this day remains separate from the US Air Force. In 1924, Mitchell wrote a prophetic report warning his superiors not to underestimate Japanese air power in the Pacific, but was ignored. His constant criticism of America's lack of investment in military aviation made him many enemies, and he was transferred to the boondocks and eventually court-martialed. The Curtis B-2 Condor was a descendant of the Martin Night Bomber short-range aircraft developed late in the First World War. Commissioned by the United States Army Air Corps, the Condor was a large fabric-covered biplane with steel rather than wood tubing used in the construction of its fuselage. Unusually for the time, a gunner position was built into the rear of the cockpit as well as the nose and fitted with a pair of Lewis machine guns. By the early 30s, the Condor was obsolete and the US was making rapid strides in aeroplane development. 1931 saw the production of the first all-metal monoplane bomber, the Boeing Y-1B-9, closely followed by the Martin B-10. Across the Atlantic, the RAF commissioned a number of prototype military aircraft, including the Hawker Hart Day Bomber. With its distinctive pointed nose and sleek, streamlined body, the Hart became the most popular light bomber of its day. Thanks to its powerful Rolls-Royce Kestrel 12-cylinder, 525-horsepower engine, the bomber had a top speed of 184 miles per hour, faster than a fighter. The Hart had a range of more than 400 miles and could carry 520 pounds of bombs. The bomber was widely used in the interwar period across the British Empire, seeing service in Egypt, Africa, India and Abyssinia.